When a Marine loses his hat while standing guard, he's forced to leave it. But when President Trump goes to pick it up, the Marine is at a loss. What happened next shocked everyone and went completely viral. The gust of wind came out of nowhere. Private Miller stood at attention with his partner, trying to remain as stoic as possible. With each step, the president was getting closer and closer to them. This was the moment he had always dreamt of. The wind rushed at them so suddenly that he had no time to brace for it. In a second, his hat had wistfully blown right off his head and was now rolling along the floor. What was he meant to do? He couldn't move. He never expected what was going to happen next. Private Miller was horrified. How had he built up his whole career for such a dreamt of moment to turn so disastrous? What would his father think? All he wanted to do was squeeze his eyes shut in horror. His efforts to get to where he was were just flashing past in his mind. He had always dreamt of serving his country with distinction. Growing up in a small town in Nebraska, he idolized the disciplined life of military service, often imagining himself in the uniform of the United States Marine Corps. He wasn't the first in his family to have this aspiration. In fact, he was born into a family with a strong tradition of military service. His grandfather had served in World War II, and his father was a Vietnam War veteran. From a young age, stories of bravery and sacrifice filled his imagination, setting the stage for his own path to service. Growing up, Miller was a disciplined and focused child. His room was always impeccably clean, his school assignments completed with precision, he participated in the Junior Reserve Officers Training Corps in high school, where he learned the basics of military life and developed a passion for serving his country. Enlisting in the Marines right out of high school, Miller was determined to uphold his family's legacy. The decision was not without its challenges, though. His mother, though proud, was also anxious about the dangers he might face. His father, however, understood his son's calling and supported his decision wholeheartedly. The day Miller left for boot camp was a bittersweet one, filled with tears of both pride and concern. Boot camp was a transformative experience for Miller. The grueling physical challenges, coupled with the mental toughness required, forged him into a disciplined and resilient Marine. Every day was a test of endurance, from early morning drills to late night study sessions. He learned to operate various weapons, mastered hand-to-hand -hand combat, and understood the importance of teamwork and camaraderie. His instructors noted his exceptional attention to detail and his unwavering sense of duty, qualities that he hoped would allow him to fulfill priority assignments one day. He wanted to be the best of the best. This was shown through the awards he received right from the beginning of his career. Miller's early career was marked by a series of commendations and promotions. His first deployment was to a conflict zone where he proved his mettle under fire. He showed exceptional bravery during an ambush, helping to save several of his fellow Marines. This act of heroism did not go unnoticed, and he was awarded a commendation for his bravery. This recognition, however, did not go to his head. Miller remained humble, always focused on his duty and the responsibilities that came with it. But even as humble as he was on the outside, he was always looking for another assignment, one better and more challenging than the last. His need to prove himself was extremely evident through this. So you can imagine his delight when he was assigned to a task that was his literal dream. Something he had always fantasized about, but had never considered he would ever get to experience. Private Miller was sitting on his bunk when he was summoned by his commander. Knowing that it had to be with regards to an assignment, he quickly made his way to his office. His mind raced at the different possibilities that it could entail. Would he be sent off to some remote jungle? Or maybe back to the desert? He had been on such a variety of assignments thus far. He really didn't think anything would shock him that much. Of course, he was terribly wrong because what he was about to hear made him want to shout in excitement. His commander, stoic as ever, looked Miller over and simply cleared his throat. Without too much hesitation, he went on to tell Miller that he was required to assist the commander-in-chief through security. At first, Miller's mind was racing as to what it meant. But then slowly, the pieces began to come together. He had to try everything inside of him to stop smiling. The commander continued with his brief, indicating that he would be required to stand at attention at the Joint Base Andrews in Germany, where the president would be attending the G20 summit. Being selected to stand guard at Joint Base Andrews was a significant honor. The position required not only impeccable military bearing, but also the highest level of trust and responsibility. 
For Miller, it was a dream come true. When his colleagues caught wind of his assignment, they immediately began teasing him. They playfully mocked him about all the things that could go wrong. They joked about him forgetting a piece of his uniform or having toothpaste on his face. It was all just in fun. But Miller couldn't help but fear deep down that he might make a mistake of some sort. So much was at stake here. For an assignment like this, he needed to be on top of his game. He spent countless hours preparing, ensuring that every aspect of his uniform was perfect and that his demeanor was befitting of the solemn duty he was about to undertake. The confirmation process for this prestigious assignment was rigorous. Miller had to undergo a series of evaluations, including physical fitness tests, psychological assessments, and background checks. His exemplary service record and the commendations he had received played a crucial role in his selection. When the official notice came, Miller felt an overwhelming sense of pride and responsibility. He knew that this was not just an honor for him, but for his family, too. When he got permission to let them know, he phoned home straight away. He could hear the pride in his father's voice when he acknowledged his achievement. To Miller, this was everything. His mother was beside herself with pride, but also anxiety. Such a high-profile case would mean high risk. She always worried terribly about her son. Little did she realize what was actually going to happen. The day was clear, but the wind was unusually strong at Joint Base Andrews as Marine One awaited the President's arrival. Miller stood at attention, his posture unwavering despite the gusts of wind. The sound of Air Force One warming up brought a sense of anticipation. They were just awaiting the President's arrival now. Any minute his car escort would arrive, and he would be led up to the plane to be flown home. It was the Marines' job to receive him and make sure that he remained safe. The weather that day was particularly challenging. Strong gusts of wind swept across the tarmac, creating a sense of unease among the personnel present. Miller, however, remained focused. He had been trained to handle all sorts of weather conditions, and this was no different. He had endured far worse deep in the desert. His eyes were fixed on the approaching cars, his mind focused on the task at hand. No amount of wind was going to distract him, or at least that's what he thought. The jet-black cars with their blacked-out windows pulled up quickly to the plane. Out popped the President's own personal security, followed by him in tow. Miller felt his body tense up as he stood at attention, like it was the first time in his life that it actually mattered. Trump chatted away with his right-hand man as he walked up to the plane, the gusting wind blowing them both around as they made their way. Miller stared straight ahead, anticipating the President's passing. But then the unthinkable happened, something that made his toes curl right where he stood. His hat blew right off his head and onto the ground right in the path of the President. Miller's heart was racing. There was nothing he could do. Moving in any way would be seen as disrespectful and a direct violation of an order. But standing there with an incomplete uniform was just as bad. Not to mention the fact that it was directly in the President's path. Miller wanted to hide from pure embarrassment, but instead he had to maintain his stoic, orderly manner like his life depended on it. He was about to be reprimanded or looked sourly at, or so he thought. The reality he met instead took him completely off guard. Noticing the incident, President Trump broke away from his entourage and bent down to pick up the hat. With a smile, he placed it back on Miller's head and gave him a reassuring pat on the arm. Miller could hardly believe what had just happened. Instead of getting the embarrassing encounter he had anticipated, he instead got praise and reassurance. Never in his life had he ever thought something like that would happen. Maintaining his stoic behavior, he continued to stand at attention for the president, determined to now continue his duty just as he had originally planned. However, the wind had other plans, and the hat was blown off once more. Miller's reflexes were twitching. If only he had been able to move, he would have managed to catch it, saving himself further embarrassment. But it was not to be. The hat was now fluttering along the floor, across Trump's feet. Miller now held his breath. The president had already been so understanding. Was he going to make him do it again? However, completely undeterred, Trump chased down the hat again. In fact, to Miller, it seemed the president had quite the knack for chasing it down. He almost looked like a child trying to catch a butterfly. Miller was horrified. He was a nobody. Why would the president go to such lengths to do such a kind thing for him? After a third attempt at catching it in the gusty wind, 
Trump was able to catch the elusive hat, only this time handing it to a nearby military official. Instead of giving it back to Miller himself, the military official went straight back to the worried Marine who securely placed it back on his head. Miller then saw the president smile slightly at him before ascending the stairs into the loud plane directly behind him. The military official also gave him a slight nod of assurance before following the president. This meant the world. Even though he had felt he had failed miserably at doing his job well, he had had an interaction that he never could have fathomed. The gesture was so unexpected it touched those who witnessed it. The president, a figure often surrounded by formality and protocol, had taken a moment to address a minor mishap with a personal touch. The simple act of picking up the hat and placing it back on Miller's head was a powerful symbol of respect and camaraderie. For Miller, the moment was both humbling and inspiring. As if this act alone was not enough to make him reel in surprise, he was then caught off guard that evening when he went home. Someone had caught the whole incident on camera. They had shared it online and it was moving fast. The incident quickly became a viral sensation. Footage of President Trump's actions circulated widely on social media and news outlets. The media highlighted the president's unexpected gesture, noting that it was rare for a president to engage in such a personal and spontaneous act. Analysts and commentators were quick to jump on it to offer their interpretations, with some praising Trump's down-to-earth demeanor and others viewing it as a staged moment for positive publicity. Despite the varying opinions, the general consensus was that the incident had humanized the president, showing a side of him that was rarely seen in public. Social media was ablaze with reactions ranging from heartfelt praise to lighthearted memes. The footage of the president chasing the hat and returning it to Miller became an iconic moment, replayed countless times on television and online. For Private Miller, the moment was surreal. The strict protocols and training had not prepared him for such an unusual and personal interaction with the commander-in-chief. His initial reaction was one of surprise, but he quickly regained his composure, focusing on maintaining his professional demeanor. The incident left him with a sense of pride, knowing that he had remained steadfast in his duty despite the unexpected turn of events. His parents called him as soon as he got home. They had seen the scene on television and had replayed it many times. They felt very honored that of all the people the president was going to show humility to, it was their very son. In the days that followed, Miller reflected on the incident with a mix of pride and humility. He received numerous messages of support from family, friends, and fellow Marines. His commanding officers commended him for his composure and professionalism. Miller understood that while the incident had brought him unexpected fame, it was his duty to remain focused on his responsibilities. The core values of the Marine Corps honor, courage, and commitment remained his guiding principles. Across the nation, people from all walks of life weighed in on the incident. Veterans expressed pride in seeing a fellow service member honored in such a way. Civilians appreciated the rare glimpse of a genuine, unscripted moment. For many, the image of the president picking up the hat and placing it back on Miller's head was a powerful symbol of the respect and gratitude that the Commander-in-Chief has for the men and women who serve. It was a moment that transcended politics, resonating with people on a human level. This was not often something seen in powerful leaders. While they might always command and praise their military, they were not usually very quick to get to their level, very much unlike what President Trump had just done. What a beautiful story exhibiting pure humanity regardless of power. How would you have felt if you were Miller? What do you think about the president's actions? Thanks for watching. Till next time.